It's the game of week two, Texas going to Alabama to break it all down from the Longhorn side of things, from inside Texas, man, the myth, the legend, Bobby Burton. Bobby, it's gang week, man. How are we feeling? Uh, feeling pretty good. I'm, you know, a lot of anxiousness in uh, Austin, Texas uh, this week. It's uh, probably the biggest road game for Texas in 10 to 15 years, I would say. Uh, Texas came out uh, coaches poll number 10 uh, this week. That means that this is the first road game for Texas where they're going, other than Texas OU, uh, which is a, a neutral site, but a true road game where uh, Texas and their, their opponent are both in the top 10 since that ill-fated night in Lubbock in 2008 when Michael Crabtree broke the heart of Longhorn Nation. So this is a big game for Texas. Uh, it really is. And uh, I would say that, uh, you know, it, it'll be interesting because it was a mixed review game one against Rice, 37-10 win, but it wasn't exactly pretty in some respects, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, the first half, it seemed like maybe there was a lot of jitters and excitement with, with it being game one. And we talked a little bit before we got rolling here. It felt like Quinn Ewers kind of got settled in in the intermediate game in the second half of that operation. When it comes to this game, what are the keys for Texas to get it done in Tuscaloosa? Well, I mean... First of all, Texas needs to, to be able to corral Jalen Milrow. So that, the Crimson Tide quarterback, you know, I know he's, he's not Tua. He's not uh, Bryce Young. But he is a tremendous runner, not somewhat unlike Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts did a lot in his time in uh, Alabama. One, you know, just a tremendous player now on in the NFL. He's a lot like that. He can throw the deep ball. He can beat you with his arm and legs. He's a great competitor. So I, I really look first for the Texas defense to try to corral him. It, it's interesting. Pete Kwiatkowski was the defense coordinator at Washington in 2016 when Alabama played Washington in the college football semifinal. Um, the Huskies held Jalen Hurts in Alabama uh, to just 24 points, right? However, uh, I feel like uh, this is going to be a situation where Nick Saban's going to take that film, try to dice it up and see what he can do differently. On the other side of the ball, though, J.D., Texas has to find a way to move the ball against this huge Alabama front. And, you know, that's tough sledding for anybody, much less a team that had mixed results like we talked about last week. Yeah, and Bobby, you said it. it's a huge spot for Texas, and it feels like for Steve Sarkeesian, his entire time at Texas has kind of led to a game like this on the road in Tuscaloosa against, you know, a big brand in Alabama. What is the sense internally when it comes to kind of where, where the psyche is heading into this game? Well, I definitely think that they got a wake up call against Rice because they did not win 52 to 10, like some people predicted. Um, the offense just wasn't clicking in the first half. Quinn Ewers uh, did not connect on the deep ball, but what's more, some people got pressure. Rice got pressure on Texas uh, up the middle. And Texas' offensive line returns five starters. They weren't expecting a Rice team to, to mount much of a pass rush. Um, and so the psyche is a little frail or a little fragile and not unexpectedly because uh, these uh, Texas fans right now, look, we've been looking at it and saying, oh, they're back or they're going to be back, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they've got to prove it. And until they prove it, I think that psyche, uh, particularly for Texas fans, is going to be fragile at best. And it's kind of a big question, but it sort of leads into that next thought. I was going to ask you, what would a win mean for Texas in this game? And I guess another way to rephrase that is, would a win mean Texas is, is back? Is, is that is that simple as that? No, no. I mean, because Texas has won a big uh, non-conference game. If you go back to, I think it was 2016, I, uh, Notre Dame came to Austin. Everybody thought Brian Kelly had a top 10 team, uh, but in Texas and Charlie Strong beat him, right? Uh, two years later, Texas goes uh, to, the, to the Sugar Bowl and beats Georgia. Texas has won big games. Uh, Texas hasn't had the potential staying power that they have with this roster right now. So when I tell you that Texas has eight to 10 NFL draft picks in this group that will go forward in April, most likely to the NFL, that's the most Texas has had in 15 years. So there's that coupled with, a, you know, two consecutive top five recruiting classes that look like they're true top five recruiting classes, not just paper warriors or paper tigers, I guess. The point being, J.D., that 
there's a sense that this one would actually be incredibly meaningful in particular because they're also going to the SEC and Alabama, like it or not, has been the king of the SEC for the past decade. Just beating Nick Saban in itself would feel like an enormous just statement for where things are headed under Steve Sarkeesian. Well, Bobby, I can't wait for this one. I know you're going to be there. We're going to be there. Going to do some content, but we appreciate you making time. Y'all, if you haven't yet got a membership to Inside Texas, going to keep you in the know for all things Texas, especially this week. If there's a week to lock in and you're a Texas Longhorn fan, this is the time to get rolling. Bobby, thanks so much. It's about time. Can't wait. We'll talk to you again real soon. Have a good one, J.D. Thanks. Longhorn fans, if you like that video, make sure you get a membership over at Inside Texas. Going to keep you in the know for everything going on on the 40 acres. Also, subscribe right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.